Hey, Jessica Goose here with Real Agriculture. Joining me right now is Scott Kaler, the Chief Scientist with WeatherLogic. Scott, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I am doing quite well, thank you. We are at the Crop Connect Conference here in Winnipeg, and uh, you spoke today to a crowd all about the prairie weather outlook and what we're going to be seeing uh, for the upcoming seeding season. So first off, before we look forward, let's take a little rewind back. Uh, what did the 2019 kind of season have for farmers? Well, in 2019, the big story was a dry start and a really wet end. Yeah. Uh, so through the first uh, half or so of the growing season, it was very dry. And that was compounded by the fact that 2017 and 18 were also very dry. So in places um, all across southern Manitoba and into southern Saskatchewan, they were running huge moisture deficits by the time we rolled into spring of 2019. Mm -hmm. And then unfortunately... The rains came, but not at the right time. They came all in September and even into October, no. and we went from a drought situation to a flood situation almost overnight in some places. Wow. Um, and on top of that, a big October snowstorm across parts of the eastern prairies. So not a, a great end to the drought, but at least we've got some moisture now going into the 2020 season. Mm -hmm. Which in some pockets, uh, especially in the prairies, uh, was desperately needed. So now looking forward for the outlook for the year 2020, uh, what is your vision as far as Alberta goes? Well, in Alberta, we're expecting that temperature-wise, it'll be fairly near normal across most of the province. If you get into the far southern areas, uh, let's say Lethbridge, Medicine Hat areas, maybe a bit above normal, but overall fairly uh, normal temperature-wise. Mm -hmm. And then as far as precipitation goes, kind of the southern half of Alberta, uh, roughly Edmonton and south, probably wetter than normal, and the northern half uh, near normal for precipitation. Okay. Uh, over into Saskatchewan? Uh, Saskatchewan, similar story temperature-wise, uh, the far southern section slightly above normal for temperature, then the central areas around normal, and then in the far north, uh, probably below normal for temperature. Mm -hmm. And precipitation again, uh, southern half of the province probably on the wetter side, mm -hmm. northern half uh, on the you know, normal to below normal end of things. Okay, lastly, Manitoba. And Manitoba is a little bit different uh, for temperature. For the most part, the whole province we're expecting fairly near normal. Uh, southwestern corner might get in on some of the warmer temperatures that are uh, you know, going to uh, affect the southern parts of Alberta and Saskatchewan. But mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, around normal for temperatures. And then precipitation, uh, like the other parts of the prairies, the southern parts of Manitoba, probably uh, more precipitation than normal. And as you move north, uh, going more toward normal or slightly below normal. Okay. And now flooding is going to be a big concern for Manitoba this year? Well, it's still a bit up in the air, okay. uh, no pun intended, because um, <laughs> what we're still looking at is whether or not we get a lot more snow this spring. Mm -hmm. So far this winter, we've seen quite a bit of snow in the American Red River Valley, uh, North Dakota and Minnesota. And of course, all that water heads up into Manitoba during the spring melt. Um, and they've seen a lot of snow in the winter so far, but Manitoba hasn't seen so much snow. Okay. Uh, so what we're watching is whether or not the American side keeps getting more snow as the winter goes on, and if snowfall increases more in Manitoba. Uh, on top of that, you also need to bear in mind the fact that we had saturated soils last fall, so that's a negative flood-wise, of course, mm -hmm. and also how rapid the melt is when spring does arrive. If it's a gradual melt, probably not a lot of flooding concerns, but if we get a rapid melt, alongside more snow and, and even rain in spring, then definitely flooding will be a concern. Mm -hmm. Any flooding concern in Alberta or Saskatchewan at the moment? Um, from what I've seen, especially Saskatchewan has virtually no snow cover across the southern half, so uh, that's really good news flood-wise. And then over in the Alberta side, I haven't looked so much at um, the flood situation, but it's a, it's a bit of a different regime, of course, because you've got the floodwaters coming out of the mountains mm -hmm. and, and flowing down onto the plains. So a little, little trickier. To, yeah, a little trickier, so you'll have to watch uh, what conditions are like in the mountains and then how that begins to thaw in spring. Mm -hmm. So are we seeing some sort of trend here over the years for the 2020 year? Well, really, if we look back to last year, the trend at this point would have been the dryness. But because we had that sudden switch to wet weather last fall, the trend has kind of been upset. So now we're, we're seeing, are we going to continue in that wet pattern? Or mm -hmm. are we going to maybe go back to, to the drier weather? Maybe that wet weather last fall was just a, a brief aberration. So uh, it's a bit uncertain right now what's going to happen. And during my outlooks, I like to mention to people that one thing that makes this forecast even trickier is the fact that there's really 
no signals hinting one way or the other mm -hmm. what type of weather is coming. We've seen really no clear patterns in the oceans in f as far as uh, something like El Nino or yeah. La Nina is concerned. We've also seen that really strange shift to wet weather last fall, which broke from the pattern we were in. And uh, on top of that, I've looked at all sorts of models uh, which try to predict the seasonal weather, and those are really showing no indication of what's coming either. Hmm. So, you know, as we all know, the summer outlooks are always uh, tricky to begin with, but this yeah. one's especially hard because of yeah. so few signals Like coming you said, out. it's all up in the air. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what we're getting here. Uh, lastly here for you, Scott, um, anything else that kind of stands out for you weather-wise um, that maybe farmers should pay a little bit more attention to across the prairies? Well, one other thing that we always look at uh, when summertime arrives is how much thunderstorm activity we're going to get mm. because thunderstorms will dump a lot of rain in a really short period of yeah. time. So people want to know, is it going to be in a hail? <laughs> well, uh, for folks in Alberta, you know more than, more than oh, you yeah, like just, about just hail. Just look at my car. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, so thunderstorms, one to watch. So what are we seeing there? Well, it looks like thunderstorm-wise, uh, the Alberta side of the prairies is probably going to be a little bit less active this year. You've seen a fair bit of activity the last few years, and you know, folks in Edmonton know all about that big hailstorm last August. But the eastern prairies haven't been quite so active, so we're expecting more of an uptick in thunderstorm activity uh, this summer on the eastern parts of the prairies, so southeast Saskatchewan into Manitoba, and a bit of a downward trend in the west in Alberta. All right, good to know, good to know. Well, Scott, thank you so much for your time. As always, uh, appreciate it. Uh, and you can uh, find the full story on realagriculture.com.